This week we are going to be discussing training evaluation. We're going to look at why we need to have training evaluation, what needs to be included in that process, what are some considerations we need uh, to think about to ensure that we are actually evaluating what we are supposed to and making sure that the training program is actually effective. We'll look at some validity concerns both internally and externally and we'll talk about the return on investment and what people should be getting out of a training program. So the number one question is why do we need to evaluate training? Why do we need to make sure that a training program is effective? When we think about a, uh, the effectiveness of a training program we need to realize how does this program benefit the company? What does the company get out of this training program? So to do that we need to have measures that are in place so that the company can uh, look at those measures and determine whether or not training is occurring. To do that, we have to collect the outcomes and analyze those outcomes. So we'll collect all the information, uh, including the whom, what, when, and how, to determine the effectiveness of a training program, which is important because companies spend a lot of time a lot of money on training programs and they want to make sure they're getting that return on their investment. Again, unlike other opportunities companies have, there isn't going to be that immediate return on investment. So they need to evaluate these training programs to ensure that training is actually in occurring. And also for these programs, they need this data to determine what they need to change about their program. What what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What do we need to change? And also, uh, whether or not should we continue this training program? I'm sure at one time, you know, you'd go to a company and they would teach you different technologies that are outdated and no longer needed. Well, if you didn't evaluate that training program, they still may be offering some of those programs. Then you also need to justify the existence. A training program can go to the company and say, this is what we provide for your company. This is why it's important to have this training program. And that's why uh, there is a need to evaluate it, both from the program perspective and also the company perspective. The first step in the evaluation process is to conduct a needs assessment. What we're doing here is we're identifying what needs training and where that training is expected to have an impact. Once we have that, then we need to develop our learning objectives, those measurable learning objectives to guide us in that process and also analyze the transfer of training. How are we going to have our trainees apply these skills? Once we have that, we come up with our, develop our outcome measures, we choose an evaluation strategy and then plan and execute that evaluation. In order to measure or evaluate a training program, a company must decide how we determine the program's effectiveness and must identify those training outcomes or criteria that it will want to measure. A common approach to this is the Kirkpatrick's four-level framework of evaluation. I have included a video that goes into a little more detail on this framework and the whole idea is that it is based on levels and they must follow these levels in order to determine the outcomes. So it starts off with reactions, which basically just is the trainee satisfa or satisfaction. Did they enjoy the session? What was their perception? Uh, how did they feel about it? From there you go to learning, and it measures what the trainees have learned. Did they acquire uh, knowledge, skills? You know, did their attitudes or be behavior change because of this? The third level is behavior, and did this uh, change the trainee's behavior? Are they going to be different on the job because of this training? Number four is the results, which is, you know, what was the return on investment? What were the costs and benefits from this? Uh, the business results achieved by the trainees. Did performance, in, or did, you know, sales increase? Did uh, number of injuries reduce? What were the results from the business perspective? In an effective training program would meet all four of these levels. So it would start at level one where the trainees would be satisfied with the training session, move into level two where the trainees will actually have learned or acquired some knowledge, skills, attitudes, or behaviors, which would lead to level three and an improvement of that behavior on the job, which then would lead to level four 
and the business will receive a return on investment for that training program. So under this framework, you need to meet all four of those criteria and you should not move on to the next one unless there has been a positive result. So you sh would not move on to level two unless you have a positive result from level one. And ideally the higher the level, the greater the impact on the results. When creating outcomes, we need to make sure that those outcomes are measuring whether or not that program is effective. And what we need to think about is the relevance of those outcomes. Are they related to the learned capabilities emphasized in the training program? Are those outcomes what they are actually learning in the training program? How reliable are those outcomes? If we gave the test, would that measure whether or not they actually learned something in that program? Next you have discrimination is if we gave a test and I score a, a on it and you score a C, does that mean that I learned more than you did? Then the practicality, which is how easily can we actually collect and measure these? Is this a process that's going to be too cumbersome and time consuming so that it's not valid for us to do? So those are what we need to think about when we determine what outcomes we want to use. How much confidence can we actually place in the results that we were getting from these um, training programs? Uh, what are some possible explanations for the results? No matter what we do, there is no evaluation design that can ensure that the results of the evaluation are completely due to the training. Uh, there, are gonna, there could be other factors at play. We can try to limit them. Uh, things we need to be aware of are the threats to validity. We have um, both internal and external. With internal validity, we want to make sure that the results are believable. And with the external validity, what we're trying to do is what is the extent to which the evaluation results are generalizable to other groups of trainees and other situations. And if we can't show that, What's the point of our evaluations? What's the point of the training program? Fortunately, we do have options available to actually control for the threats of validity. And we can use pre-tests and post-tests to show differences and show that training is occurring. We can have random assignment, meaning that only we only analyze a random number of assignments to make it less likely that anything is out of whack or doesn't align properly and we can also use a comparison group to compare the effects of the training program. It is interesting because in another course we are looking at research design and there are a lot of these options also available when conducting research. So these are time and tested uh, designs that are effective at actually determining whether or not something is occurring, whether or not training is incurring. So you have a post-test only where there is just a post-test at the end. You have a pre-post-test in which your trainees take a pre-test before and then a post-test at the end. Uh, post-test only with comparison group. You have your pre-post-test with a comparison group as well. You have a time series, which means it's over a certain amount of time. Every so often there is some type of assessment. Then you have a time series with a comparison group and reversal and then the Solomon 4 group. So looking at this, obviously the complexity increases as you go along. So it would make sense, you would think, to have the most complex evaluation process. The problem with this, as you can see, is that it's high on cost and time. Yes, the strength is high, but it's going to cost more money and it's going to take longer. So how do we determine which one of these evaluation designs to use? When determining which design to go with, there are some factors we need to consider or a company needs to consider, such as the change potential. You know, can the program be modified? How important is the actual program? What does it affect? What is the scale? How many trainees are actually involved in this training program? If it's a small program, 
it may not be worth the time and effort to really go into a detailed and complex design. What is the purpose of the actual training and what is the organization culture? Um, is demonstrating results part of the company's norms and expectations? Can can a more complex study be analyzed? Again, it's going to take more time and more effort and people are going to have to be knowledgeable and actually be able to look at that information and interpret it and present it in a way that it makes sense. Do we have those type of people at our company? Is it too expensive? Do we want? Are we going to spend too much money on the evaluation of this? And then also, when is the information needed? The more complex the design, the longer it is going to take uh, to get those results. So if we want to get those results quick, we probably want to go with a simpler format. To wrap up this week, training evaluations are used to determine the effectiveness of a training program. Uh, you need to identify the appropriate outcomes that you want to measure and those are based off a needs assessment and the learning objectives and what this does it helps us determine the level of learning transfer of training and allows us to select the best design for uh, the evaluation of this specific training program now there is no one size fits all design and it depends on your company depends on your resources and the time when you determine your design. But an effective evaluation helps reduce the both internal and external validity and ensures that we are actually measuring what is supposed to be measured and also ensures that training is occurring. I've included a few videos this week to add to your knowledge. Uh, they should be beneficial and hopefully all of this helps you complete your assignments this week and what you'll be looking at dominoes and then there's another question related more towards education and how it relates to training and development.